So today I thought I'd show you an ignition coil driver I built. This ignition coil is one I found on an old broken generator. It had been abandoned. People had been using it for target practice and the output lead was missing. It kind of looks like a TV flyback transformer except the core is not ferrite. It's 16 thin sheets of iron. It's rusted because it was in a pond that was full, it's full of water some of the times of year. I'm kind of amazed it still works after being under a few feet of water for months. Another important thing about this coil is it has an open magnetic circuit. The core sticks out both ends. And it, so if you wrap a coil around it, it's going to get magnetically linked with the other windings. So I decided to drive it with what's called a Jewel Thief circuit. It's a really simple blocking oscillator circuit that's all over the internet. I've seen it used on ferrite beads, 60 hertz transformers, TV, flyback transformers, air core coils. It'll work on almost any transformer, but I've never seen it done on an ignition coil, so it had to be done. This winding is the internal winding of the fly, not flyback, ignition coil, internal primary winding. This is the high voltage output. And this is a winding I wrapped around the outside of the coil. I hope to get enough turns to have an equal voltage induced in it and in the primary, but I ran out of wire after only about 130 turns and decided to just give it a try without getting any more wire. This transistor is a BUL28, BUL128, sorry, from a fluorescent, old com compact fluorescent light, but any high power NPN transistor rated for a few hundred volts should do. I melted a crayon to it so you know if it overheated. It overheats after half a minute using just oscillating on 18 volts for 10 to 15 seconds with an arc going. It seems to take longer to overheat now that I added these diodes. They're supposed to prevent negative voltage from reaching the base of the transistor. Just one and 4,007 diodes, one amp, thousand volt. They came out of a fluorescent light too, I think. It's a lot of good parts you can get out of fluorescent light. This is a neon indicator bulb. It doesn't conduct until 90 volts. AC or DC has across it. I was just going to use that to give an idea of how much voltage was across a transistor, maybe limit it so it doesn't like short it out. The funny thing is, when the output is open circuit, it doesn't light. When it's arcing or shorted out, it doesn't light, but it flashes for a brief moment sometimes when the arc strikes. You can hear the oscillation within its open circuit, but the whole cycle rate goes ultrasonic once an arc is struck. Probably didn't need to say all that when I can just show it. You can strike the arc at maybe a quarter inch distance, six or seven millimeters, but you can draw it out twice that, no problem. One thing I noticed, probably because the frequency is really high and the plasma channel never fully cools between cycles, this arc really transfers a lot of heat. So you can see here I have no problem lighting a toothpick with it, if I get it. Dang. Need to get it structured there, get it sitting somewhere. Use this container to prop it over and the outlet on fire quick. Anyhow, this is a pretty crude circuit. It's not really that powerful. The transistor overheats fast, etc. But I thought I'd share it. For more info on blocking oscillators and jewel thief circuits, I left some links in the description. I'm, it's Wikipedia and Diode Gone Wild has built all these different power switch mode power supplies. This is like a noob level switch mode power supply compared to the stuff he made. And Rodelco 2007, BigClive.com. 
There's a lot of good videos on this. The Wikipedia link really shows how it runs, shows the process. The cool thing about it is it'll run with almost any transformer. So, I guess that's it for now. Bye.